On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your pain level? And pick a smiling or sad face to go with it. Pain is a subjective area of medicine. Everyone has a different pain threshold. We can't measure pain with a number. There isn't always a perfect solution to treat pain. And yet, pain is one of the most common reasons patients go to their doctors. It's a significant medical concern, and we can't ignore it. In the quest for pain elimination, we sometimes use pain management. One tool at our disposal is opioid pain medication. Unfortunately, unmonitored pain medication has created a significant public health concern, prescription drug abuse. The numbers are astounding of, of the effect that this has had on not only just our local community, but our whole entire country. And I don't want to throw out a lot of numbers because I feel like numbers kind of go in and out of people's um, ears and they don't really process it. But just to, I'll give you one number to put it in perspective. Every day, 115 Americans die from some sort of opioid-related drug overdose. And almost half of those are due to prescription pain medication. It's a doctor's responsibility to be responsible about giving out the prescriptions for those types of medications and they need to empower the patients with the knowledge of the effect that those medications can have on their lives. There has been a dramatic rise in prescription drug abuse or misuse in recent years. To combat this trend, both patients and healthcare professionals must be vigilant when using pain medications. Monitoring side effects, particularly tolerance, can reveal a lot. Sometimes they can actually increase pain sensitivity, so your pain threshold actually decreases, meaning that something that caused you pain before, now it causes you a lot of pain, and now you need more. And when you need more, that's where you develop the risk of dependence. That's called tolerance, when you are taking more of the medication than you were before to achieve the same goal, to achieve the same level of pain control. For many, the process of dependence happens slowly slowly enough that people cannot pinpoint the exact moment an addiction starts. But a clear sign of developing tolerance is a patient going through their medication quickly and needing more frequent refills than expected. That should raise a red flag. There's also a prescription monitoring program that you can check to see when the last time a patient had filled a prescription for an opioid or a controlled substance, which we refer to, and opioid pain medications are under that category of controlled substances. So you can see when a patient was prescribed that medication before. And if you see that it's happening a lot, then they're obviously having serious issues with pain and now they may be developing dependence on pain medication. So then you need to you know, provide the patient with appropriate resources to educate them and to assist them in getting help. Patients that require a longer period of pain management are at highest risk. Using pain medications for short periods of time and under cautious supervision rarely leads to dependence. Keeping this in mind, recovery goals should be in place to keep patients safe. It should always be the goal to get off of prescription pain medications and to move toward other, less addicting modalities of pain management. And what are those? Physical therapy, there's occupational therapy can also help alleviate pain. Using non-addicting uh, medications like Tylenol and Advil or other forms of ibuprofen. There are actually some antidepressants which are very effective in treating pain and also some anti-seizure medications that can be used to treat pain. So all of those need to be entertained. The use of those need to be recommended to patients in order to avoid developing dependence. Patients can ensure that they're using prescription medications appropriately by following the directions, never using another person's prescription, and keeping an open dialogue with their physician about any changes or side effects. For patients living in pain, it can be frustrating to take the slow course but it is in everyone's best interest. No one really understands or knows the point at which someone is going to become dependent on this medication. And what we want to is to try to avoid any potential of that happening. But you should always try to use the least addicting medications to treat your pain from the get-go. And, and, and I think that's something that's very important for the patients to understand and for the doctors to understand more importantly. Pain medications can manage pain and improve the quality of life for many when taken as prescribed. 
Even when tolerance or dependence occurs, it does not have to be permanent. With the right help and good follow-up care, patients can live healthy and happy lives and be like the smiling face on the pain chart. I'm Dr. Daniel Applebaum, and you're watching the eHealth Network. See you next time.